Hello and a very warm welcome. My name is Molly Gampir and you are watching We On World Is One. Fashion is not just a reflection of a designer's ingenuity or skill. It's indicative of their values as well as their sense of justice and morality. Now, these words by Susanna Jaffer hold a lot of significance today. Let me first ask you a question. What does the word fashion mean to you? Well, it might mean different things to different people, but in this day and age, merely being fashionable is not enough. One has to keep up with the times. Green fashion is the need of the hour. What's that, you are wondering? Well, in simple terms, caring for our planet needs to be made fashionable. And what better way to do this than to promote the practice of eco-friendly fashion while also supporting the local artisans. Fashion for Good is a joint initiative of WEON and Fashion Entrepreneur Fund. This campaign will advocate and promote sustainable practices within the fashion industry while also providing a platform to support and empower artisans and craftspeople whose traditional skills are at risk due to the growing popularity of high street and fast fashion. Fashion for Good brings together a diverse range of stakeholders, including fashion designers, textile experts, policymakers, artisans, industry leaders, and sustainability advocates. The campaign aims to facilitate meaningful conversations on the future of sustainable fashion in India. What are the challenges? What is the way forward? How can we make the most of the opportunities? All this and more to be discussed with our distinguished panelists today. Joining me are very special guests. But before I go across to them, here's a quick reminder that this is just the beginning. We are only getting started. We are setting the stage for a mega event that will be taking place in the month of March in Mumbai, bringing together some of the biggest names from the world of fashion, entertainment and textiles. Fashion Entrepreneur Fund's marquee event, the India Fashion Awards, one of the most sought after awards in the fashion community, will celebrate the best in the industry. So there is a lot to look forward to. Let's get started. With me today for this panel discussion are design management strategist, education expert, thought leader, uh, Dr. Dali Koshi, Ms. Neva Jain, uh, uh, Chief Public Relations Officer for uh, India Fashion Awards. We also have with us Professor Sumesh Singh, co-founder, Craft Village. Good to have you with us over here. Thank you. Thank Let you me so just Thank begin you, by asking each one of you uh, about the significance of this initiative and why it is the need of the hour. Dr. Koshi. So Indian fashion industry is at a proverbial fork where you have to choose the path forward. And it is very critical which path you are going to choose. In the public policy environment, sustainable development has been under discussion for several decades. But with the sustainable development goals from the 2015 to 2013, there has been an additional focus on different segments of industries. And India has a rare opportunity for taking the leadership position. Often it does not happen that you can actually uh, the, the leadership position is within your grasp. And that is what is going to happen. And I am so glad that uh, the entire uh, initiative taken on uh, Fashion for Good is actually coming at a very opportune time. Just at the background of the recent uh, the conference of parties, at, at the backdrop of the Sustainable Development Goals, even go beyond a bit if you look at the World Skills International uh, students uh, you know, who made the declaration, think green. So there is a definite environment emerging and India has been in the forefront of using traditional techniques, craftsmanship over the years. Now, how to transform this into a situation where you can actually create a path which is for the future? Hmm. Uh, because this is uh, leading a path to 2047 and, and uh, the Amrit Kal, so to say, is a great opportunity to rejuvenate and to look at the path towards sustainable fashion. And because, you know, when we look at uh, the entire uh, path of uh, this sustainability, there are design communities, there are manufacturers, there are, you know, the media, the, the whole consumers, the entire 
end of the cycle. So how do you actually look at the value chain from the farm to fashion, from completely looking at farm to fabric to fiber to fabric to fashion and factory? Everything is the question which you are now looking at. And that is where we need to bring in the awareness of people at all levels. And that cannot be done without some event which is uh, like, you know, which is now looking at a vision paper, looking at uh, bringing together all the stakeholders in one platform. Neva Jain, what is the best way, according to you, to actually send out that message to the consumers and across the industry as well, to actually opt for sustainable fashion practices and also choose the brands uh, that adopt those practices? Well, I think firstly, the most important thing is to build the awareness, the knowledge, the know-how. And you as Vion, as trailblazers, having joined hands with India Fashion Awards, is going to actually set the tone for the most important topic of present and I think of the dec decade ahead, which is sustainability, which is eco-friendly. And the submergence and the convergence of that is how we will actually be able to take things forward and see the shifts that happen. I think the seven R's, which not many people know about, are very, very important. The first one is reduce. And reduce has to mean that you reduce actually the purchasing of garments, which is tough to do because for most people, fashion, good clothes, you know, dressing up well gives you the self-confidence and self-esteem. Secondly, we have to reduce our carbon footprints. We have to reduce the emissions. And that is very, very important. But that also happens by awareness. I think also if we as responsible citizens can be focused on recycling, and getting to the research of what sustainability is all about, what eco-friendly products are all about, what eco-friendly designers are all about. It requires a lot of research, it requires effort. And then it's of course about repurposing, repairing and rent. This is not so predominant in India as it is abroad, but top designers abroad have actually gone to varied stores like a Harrods, like a Selfridges in London, you have it in New York City with Harvey Nicks. And what happens here is you can go and buy that beautiful designer garment that you may not be able to afford to purchase. But these are all ways and means to bring about sustainability, to bring about awareness, to see the shifts and be the effect for the change that we want. I think a very interesting statement is when you have celebrities world over taking up the cause of consciousness, awareness and mindfulness, I think it will trickle down to the next generation. Like recently, Ricky Cage, he actually made it very clear that he's worn this Sherwani 10 times and he's going to be wearing it again in India at an Indian concert. So I think that is, these are going to be the ways and means like we're going to do at India Fashion Awards with Vion as our channel partner. This will be huge in setting the tone for youngsters out there to actually understand sustainability and get into eco-friendly stuff. Professor Singh, um, given the um, way in which you've actually been uh, spreading the message uh, to support local artisans and craftspeople, that's the other challenge that needs to be dealt with. What is the best way to actually get the uh, wearer stakeholders on board on that front? So basically, you know, craft... Uh, has a solution for all the problems which we have. Be it global warming we are talking about, carbon emissions as you know she was talking about. That has all the answers. Simple reason is, I'll give you an example. The biggest apparel, if somebody wants to refer to for sustainability is sari. A sari is never cut, never sewn to the body, but it can drape any body, any height of a woman, any width of a woman, anything. And later those sarees goes in becoming the bed sheets for babies, you know, using Indian crafts. So from a apparel product to look at, you know, the endless use of it, it shows so much a potential, you know, of one product. And very interestingly, Charles and Rames, two very famous, you know, American designers, when they listed out universal design, they said, you know, the single design, which fits everything. They picked up two products from India. The first was sari, second was lota. The vessel, you know, which is being used everywhere, right? Yeah. So, the whole point here is that crafts have solutions for future, which means our past has solutions for future. All the point is, we need to look back 
into what the knowledge was mm -hmm. right so as for example now prime minister modi has started saying that uh, the india is vishwa guru yeah so vishwa guru means basically you have to bring in knowledges of what you have been retaining for all those ages right so we have so much of knowledge for natural raw material yeah. natural dyeing process hand weaving and then producing the most sustainable textiles in the world right so all that needs to be revisited all that needs to be looked back and we need to really learn from that i'll give you amazing example of a, a craft specific craft it is called akola block printing hmm. right it's 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 from one small village in rajasthan for 15 days during diwali this community they don't do any work and when the question was asked why are not doing any you know dyeing any natural dyeing or whatever indigo dyeing work hmm. they said because you know at this point of time there are small insect which are born our work is going to kill them so therefore we decided that for two weeks we are not going to do that look at the sustainability you know which is in our blood for so much of time and it is after all the pressing need of the hour i mean there is no planet b i mean and it's a race against time after all and education can be a very powerful tool and who better um, than you to actually shed light on the role that educational institutions can actually play um, when it comes to inculcating uh, the habit of sustainability right from the start so i think the institutions across the world yeah. are definitely now conscious yeah that there is need for teaching uh, the designers in a different manner hmm there is a study by the european commission which has pinned down that 80% of the adverse impact on the environment made by garments can be avoided if the design stage is properly made uh, eco designing rather than pure designing right so we have been so far teaching design let us say hmm. at the education institutions the new curriculum should call it eco design similarly we have been teaching in manufacturing mostly focused on lean manufacturing it should be now called green manufacturing yeah you have to really make the management people not just a think strategy but think green strategy how do you look at from cradle to grave the travel of the garment mm. how do you ensure that at every stage of the value creation you are looking at the value which is intangible yeah. which is in terms of how does it impact the the planet as you rightly said or the entire question of environmental degradation the single plastic usage the retailers of gar you know all kinds yeah. put together are probably responsible for more than 50% of the entire single plastic usage right so when you look at you know the entire chain the eco designing uh, green manufacturing think green all these will form an attitudinal change that is where the education institutions need to focus on neva jain what are some of the success stories out there that you would like to talk about just you know to inspire those who are watching this charted out so i what i found in my research was if you take designers all across the board globally you have a bethany williams from london hmm. she totally believes in the social environmental issues and the aspect of it all and she has now developed with local traditional italian craftsmen the 100% percent sustainability of the actual cotton that is being used mm. so that is with her there then you have ecot a spanish brand which is actually using recycling of fish nets consumer plastic bottles worn out tires and swimsuits then you have our very own doodlech who is a desi designer and he is focusing on the sustainability and in innovative eco-friendly fabrics such as organic cotton such as corn and banana fabric and most importantly textiles which are left over then there's another company called recode which is a korean brand specializing in salvaging materials that would be thrown away and reinterpreting them in a designer format so it could actually be airbags old car seat covers fabric linings then there's another company called um, bundgard nisa another designer brand swav in kenya and you have zurata in latin america i think what's happening is what is cohesively tying up, tying up these seven varied 
designer brands from all over the world that they are very clear that they have to focus on sustainability they have to focus on eco friendly products which are used which are actually used products mm. and then they redesign and recreate right and talking about that shift professor singh how can we not talk about policies and on the policy front um, we've come a long way but what according to you are the immediate challenges and the bottlenecks that we need to navigate so the first most important thing is that if you are talking so boldly and strongly about you know uh, sustainability hmm. is that part of policy yes is there a sustainable policy yes. for all domains of the industry right. including fashion of course which we are talking about so the first and most important thing is that we have to comprehend and build a policy around that hmm. right that how sustainability not only part of you know the government's uh, mandate but also as a part of industry practice educational institutions priority and then skill india's you know major mandate then going down to artisans and craft person connecting them in terms of bringing the value right so how do you really look at you know articulating the whole thing hmm. and then bringing that into a policy framework right. right that is one second is you've seen the budget allocations hmm. have you seen anything which is you know which is for green funding hmm. so what happens is i think there is somewhere we feel that you know the policy makers right being it uh, the politicians even the bureaucrats they also need to be more aware of in terms of you know how uh, the green policy needs to be crafted for the fashion and apparel industry and i think uh, uh, dr koshi i think it's a great opportunity even to as a part of vision paper you know which we are articulating yes that one part must also include sensitizing this particular community because until unless if they are not sensitized who's going to actually create a policy and implement it dr koshi would you like to take that and how do you see this really you know the the point is that the fashion industry is still nascent yeah. in india it has just completed nifty has completed about 39 years and in terms of fdci was uh, recently celebrating 25 years you know so obviously it is uh, something which we need to work towards uh, creating that framework between the industry participation uh, for for instance when you look at how the brands are now part of a sustainable apparel coalition right 300 brands are already part of that in the world community how many indian brands have joined them and how do you actually look at the corporate governance and government reporting have now made it mandatory for you know uh, for reporting on the sustainability initiative what about the fashion industry yeah. fashion and textile industry employ about 45 million people directly and about another 100 million people indirectly and world over it's a 60 million uh, more than 60 million people who are working in this industry right so obviously governments uh, government ne needs to give attention in the policy framework for sustaining this group of people to also remain within the industry for which for example if you look at the green uh, think green or uh, green warriors hmm. the entire sustainable chain can produce in the digital age itself large number of jobs so i believe it's a great opportunity for uh, creating uh, india's leadership position because we are we have been followers for too long hmm. in everything can we actually take at least in sustainable fashion mm. a leadership position mm. because india's uh, textile heritage from harappan indo harappan civilizations and the 5000 years of you know uh, rich history of uh, uh, cultural and craft traditions how do you build on it to take that ethos out like japanese have done for example many of their products are actually derived from the craft inspiration mm. india has stopped short of that they have allowed these uh, skills to languish so if you can bring in the skills push it up from utility to fashion to lifestyle to luxury that travel where people start expecting to pay more but get a durable good quality sustainable product at the end of the day that is where you know the consumer feel aspire aspiring to actually possess that because they give value to that product it is hap it is happening now in organic food it is happening in ev cars hmm. it will also happen in fashion Neva Jain, uh, there is a lot to expect from this uh, mega conclave that will be happening in the month of March. If you can just lay out the expectations, broadly speaking, as far as uh, the initiative is concerned. So I think for us, because we've chosen the theme "Fashion for Good," yes, because we've chosen the topic of sustainability, of eco-friendly, of bringing about the awareness. I think with this two-day conclave, 
the discussions that are going to take place. We're going to have people from policy. We're going to have, you know, people like the NICA founder as well as Ananya Billa. What happens is we're having a cross section of people from varied walks of life mm. and they can discuss in their particular domain how they can see the shifts happening for sustainability, for the promotion of eco-friendly. I think this will just really build a huge amount of buzz, a huge amount of hype and a huge amount of conversation. Indeed, Professor Singh, um, if you can just also talk about uh, the way in which you look at this initiative as a milestone in the journey towards sustainable fashion and, you know, your, your interactions with the local uh, craftspeople and the local artisans and the need to actually uplift them and support them. Uh, uh, in multiple ways and how this will be an important way forward in that direction. So it's very interesting that uh, India Fashion Awards, uh, when it started, the first award which was given was uh, called Craft Appreciation Award. And in fact, I think 2024 is the time when India Fashion Awards is going to really make that statement yes. to the world that sustainability is the future. Fashion is not fickle. Yes. Fashion is not fickle, you know, it is sustainable hmm. and to do that we have to connect back in terms of a lot of things the first most important is people right and people when we talk about india's craftsman community if you look at you know dr koshi was talking about apparel industry but craft community we i mean there are no official figures you'll only find seven million artisans as quoted by various sources but I mean, we know that more than 50 million artisans are working directly to this cluster and 250 indirectly to the cluster, making it the second largest employment provider after agriculture. So rather than, you know, dictating the terms there, what we should have done is we should have partnered with them. Yes. Learned from them and then, you know, must have seen very closely that what are these practices which has been sustaining for thousands of years, right? And still in existence. How do we learn from that and bring into the mainstream fashion and bring the, you know, the big bang of green fashion to the whole world and say, look, this is the India story. This is the Indian story, you know, which we are bringing to the world. That's how also fashion can be done. Who better to tell us about that uh, than Professor Singh? And uh, um, this is just the beginning, like I yes. said, right at the outset. Uh, these conversations, there will be so many of them coming our way uh, to actually brainstorm and arrive at a consensus. And all of this culminating into that vision paper that Dr. Koshi just spoke about as well at length. And this mega conclave in Mumbai will actually be a huge milestone in the journey towards sustainable fashion. Dr. Koshi, Neva Jain, Professor Singh, thanks very much Thank for being here so uh, for Thank this discussion so and helping us better understand the opportunities and also the challenges that lie ahead. Passion for Good uh, is uh, the mantra that uh, we will be hoping will resonate with uh, all of those who are watching us. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the updates on the move.